Hi there. Now, here we have a question on using the binomial expansion. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, haven't seen it before, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for the first part then, part A, we've got to expand 2 minus 3x all to the power 6. So I'll just write that in, 2 minus 3x all to the power 6. I'm going to say that this is identical to, OK, and we're going to write the first three terms down then. Now, when you're doing the binomial expansion, I'm assuming that you're familiar with that. If not, just a quick reminder for terms like this. If you've got something of the form a plus b to the power n, where n is a positive integer, which we have here, then you can use this form of the binomial expansion. So again, as I say, if you're not sure about this, do check out my video tutorials on it. So what we've got then is a is the 2, b is minus 3x, and n is the 6. So the first term here is nc0, so that's going to be 6c0. And then a to the power n, so that would be 2 to the power 6. And then followed by b to the power 0. b is the minus 3x, so it's minus 3x to the power 0. So that's the first term. Next term is plus, then it's 6c1. And then it is a. 2 to the power n minus 1. In other words, we reduce the power on the 2 by 1. OK, so it's gone from 6 to 5. Now we increase the power on the b term, minus 3x. It was 0. It's now up to 1. All the time, check out that these two numbers here, these two powers, always add together to give you the power here. 5 and 1 is 6. Here we've got 6 and 0 is 6. Always a good check. Last term now, third term is 6c2. Reduce the power on the 2. It's now down to 4. And then increase the power on the minus 3x. It's now up to 2. And don't forget to write plus and so on. OK, so there's our first three terms. You just need to put these through your calculator. Some of them you most probably should know without using a calculator though. Anything C0 is always 1. So you're just left with 2 to the power 6, which is 64. And then anything to the power 0 here is 1. So you just got the first term is 64. For anything that's NC1, it's always N. So this is 6. 6 times 2 to the power 5, 6 times 32 times minus 3x. That comes to a negative value and it's 576. And you've just got times x. The next term is going to be a positive term because you're squaring minus 3x. So it's positive. So you've got 6c2, which you can work out on your calculator times 2 to the power 4, times 9 here. OK, minus 3 when you square it's going to be 9. If you do all of that, you should find you get 2160. And that's multiplied with x squared. And then you've got plus and so on. OK, so that's the first part. Move on now to part B, which uses this part that we've just worked out. We've got hence here, so it's suggesting that we should be using this expansion. So we've got to work out the first three terms in this expansion here. I'll just copy it down. First of all, we've got 1 plus x over 2 multiplied with the 2 minus 3x all to the power 6. And this is identical to, well, it's going to be 1 plus x over 2 multiplied by all of this expression here. So we've got 64 then minus 576x plus 2160x squared and then plus and so on. So 
if we're going to work out the first three terms, that's going to be a constant, an x term, and an x squared term. And so anything else other than that can, we can ignore. So first of all, you're going to get 1 then multiplied by each of these terms. So you're going to get back each of those three terms again. So we'll just copy them in again plus 2160x squared. Now, when it comes to multiplying by x over 2, or half x, all we need to do is just multiply the first two terms. We can forget about this third term. That will be an x cubed term. We don't need it. So let's do half x then times the 64. That's going to give us plus 32x. Then we've got half x times minus 576x, and that's going to give minus 288x squared. And then just put plus and so on. So we don't need that x cubed term. So grouping these terms together, we've just got the constant here, 64. As far as the x terms go, we've got minus 576 plus 32 there, and that's minus 544. So that would be minus 544x. And then for the x squared terms, we've got 2160 minus 288, which is plus 1872. And that would be x squared. And don't forget, plus and so on. Okay, so there's the first three terms then in the expansion.